Hey guys, what's going on? Tony from Mobile Paintball and Matt from Detroit Paintball, and here's another edition of a classic marker we're bringing to you guys. All right, let's get into this. Here we go. We're going to pull this old school gun case open. Oh man. How much does this thing weigh? Probably five pounds. Yeah, <laughs> at least, honestly. <laughs> It's not real light to what everybody else seems to think now. <laughs> From uh, my point of view, it looks like it's an Iron Man Los Angeles uh, Matrix Edition. <laughs> have Matt tell you a little bit more about yeah. it. <laughs> what we have here is we have a basically about a 2003 or so uh, Matrix. Uh, it's about the same time as uh, it's after uh, Gen XE and such had made the Matrix, um, but I want to say it's before Dai actually bought the patents or whatever for the DM3. Um, this guy right here, I actually ended up picking this up a few years back from uh, Trucker Billy. Trucker Billy, everyone knows good old Trucker <laughs> Billy. Shout out Trucker Billy. Hashtag Trucker Billy in the comments below. Hashtag. Um, and I bought I bought this from him uh, online, and it's got some actual kind of custom upgrades. The trigger itself has been like milled down, and then it's uh, got the I don't know what you want to call it, but it attaches to it, which I thought was real interesting because they didn't. It came most of the matrixes at the time had an angel LCD trigger yeah, or yeah. something something very very similar. Um, it does have an eye system as well. Um, this from, compared to the old matrixes, it's basically milled the whole tube off the one side, um, which was a volume chamber, basically. It came with the LPR to control uh, the cycling of the bolt. <laughs> it blows my mind that this is, the, this is an LPR these days. Now they're just built into the gun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then uh, back here you unscrew the knob and then your 9 volt battery uh, would be back here uh, basically your your board uh, is in here and then the switch is on the back which is kind of funny is this one's got a push button on off which was a later new feature uh, believe it or not my first matrix I bought actually from your brother I brought his uh, matrix LED the <laughs> yes yeah. sir yeah. so um, I, I've been kind of attached to him ever since because while they had really bad air efficiency back then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get maybe five pods off of well, a like six, 15 years ago, <laughs> right? A lot of technology has happened in 15 years, so absolutely, they were the big selling point on this gun. The big it was electronic. It was electronic. This was kind of the the paintball marker. Other, it was like you you could either get a shoebox shocker, an angel. Um, yeah, I don't even or, think, I don't even or think this. the pulses were out then. No, yeah. not even the Intimidator was out wow. yet. Yeah. Maybe a defi Bob Long Defiant, but it's like for the most part, it was just a different gun. But the thing was though too, it was a, it was a, the, the bolt. Custom mill, the bolt. Yep, it was complex, but you didn't have the complexity of the uh, Shoebox Shocker. The Shoebox Shocker basically ran dual solenoids one for moving and then one for shooting where this just had the, it has just basically I one I wish I knew mode. you would have brought that up because I have a shoebox shocker sitting in the back. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we may have to do a versus two. on that. Two. <laughs> Is that a runner? <laughs> uh, you unscrew the knob in the back, basically, uh, this is actually threaded where this would come off Back here is you needed your Allen key. I think it was like three sixteenths, and you'd have to rotate this out. And then basically the whole entire bolt assembly would come out this way. The breech, uh, this part, um, at the time they didn't have That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't have milling on the sides over here for the for eyes. Later on. Um, I don't believe it was the Ironman, but it was a Punisher version for the New York. Uh, Extreme one. Yep. They had the fiber optic eye. They were like the first ones to do eyes, if I remember correctly. 
um, but you could have different breaches. So if you didn't like a center feed, you could have one that was a, a right feed, like a old school mm -hmm. cocker or auto mag, or you could have one for a left. And I'm not 100% positive, but I think they actually had one where it came out actually off the sides if you wanted to run a, a air, guns uh, air gun design mm -hmm. warp feed at the time. So, um, so it had some really interesting features. It actually has a rubber dedents basically to stop your double feeding, which did kind of get to be a pain because they would erode and oh, break yeah, down yeah. And, and whatnot. Um, but this gun basically, uh, the bolt and everything really led the way um, for like the DM4 yeah, and on to where platform, we're at. Yeah where I think it really opened up things for, um, for Dai because after this, I think Dai really realized on how complicated and everything it was in the, in the time consuming assembly and disassembly where basically uh, Dai solved the bolt maintenance and everything uh, on the DM4. The grips themselves I bought later. These actually came uh, with the, the e, Gen, Gen E matrix. It was like the first thousand came with the limit, limited metal, grips. Metal grips. <laughs> metal grips to make it lighter. <laughs> yeah. um, I think the rubber wouldn't make it lighter at all. No. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, I think it my my passion had come about liking the gun though because at the time like for paintball paintball was like out of the woods but not really out of the woods and i know from like playing at, at lone wolf we really were still really in the woods we were playing behind logs and stuff and hyperball oh, yeah. kind of tubing but it was like these markers while they weren't very air efficient let's say however they were extremely quiet so you could long ball you could you could yeah. get real close to people and brush piles or whatever and they'd basically almost know not even know you're there so um i just figure i bring it in to <laughs> yeah no it's great it's a, it's a great piece of paintball history right here this is uh you said around 2003 ish yeah yeah because uh edition, mate one of the first this is the platform the dms built off of the original matrix yep Yep, and it led the way because I believe that once Ironman started using them when uh, Rich Telford and a lot of the guys yep. were still playing for the Ironman, they started uh, they started shooting these in early 2000. Uh, and Do you know what one of these cost back in the day? Uh, back in the day, they were like eighteen hundred dollars. It was <laughs> it was that yeah, that yeah. golden price for uh, aftermarket uh, paintball stuff and. Um, I couldn't tell you how, how many were made with Ironman, but there's some other versions of the gun for various Ironman players. There's like a squid version and there's like a gator, a gator version. And then there was a mass production of these where things change because it's like it, it doesn't have milling over here of this uh, teardrop kind of looking thing. Um, where that was like a team gun or yeah. whatever. You'd almost have to do your own uh, research. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things that we've progressed. It was another speedball gun that has transcended into the DM3 to the DM4 to uh, now it's DM, <laughs> well, DM 16, 17. Where are we at? Uh, M2, Probably. M2, yeah, M2. we're M2. in the die M2 well, MOS air. Yeah, now, now everything's all now. Now you have a screen so on guys, the side. Out there, the viewers, this is where. <laughs> The M2, <laughs> this is where it all started. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is going to be another classic uh, paintball throwback episode for you guys. We hope you appreciate bringing some of the, I mean, we're going to have guns that are 15, 20 plus years old uh, in these episodes. So give this video a like. Thanks again to, from, uh, to Matt from Detroit Paintball for coming out, bringing some of this classic stuff to show us. And uh, give the video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can find me, uh, guns like this and stuff, at Maddie's Paintball Emporium on Facebook and also uh, Detroit Paintball on Facebook and DetroitPaintball.com.